Today we're taking you to a different kind of paradise here in Central Florida. We're here at King's Landing and pretty soon we're going to be taking you a mile upstream to the Emerald Cut, which is known for its jungle-like atmosphere and its pristine emerald waters. Now it is very different than the award-winning beaches that Florida is known for, but in a few minutes you'll see why it's every bit as beautiful. Now in addition to taking you on this adventure on the water, we're also going to share some information and tips to help you plan your own day at King's Landing. And if you're not into paddleboarding or kayaking, but would still love to experience this tropical Florida to paradise, we'll be sharing two great nearby options for you as well. Located in central Florida near the city of Apopka, King's Landing lies approximately 15 miles northwest of downtown Orlando and 40 miles southwest of Daytona Beach. The privately owned attraction is located along Rock Springs Run, which originates at Rock Springs around a mile to the south. I'm currently walking along the road that you park on to get to King's Landing. I went ahead and walked to the office to check in for our paddle today. Skylar was finishing up blowing up our boards. The office area had a nice map. They showed me where to go, so I think it's gonna be a fun day. With our boards now inflated and all our gear ready to go, it was time to begin our journey to the Emerald Cut. All right, they do not allow alcohol here. They did check our bags. There is Skylar going through the waterway. I think we're gonna take a right once we get out of here. We've only been paddling maybe two or three minutes or so down this little waterway and as you can see we're coming up on the run. You can already see up there that the bottom is sandy. The water looks really clear. I think we're both pretty excited for this paddle. Sign for Emerald Cut straight ahead. That's where we're heading first. So we're taking a right out of the waterway to paddle towards the Emerald Cut. I think you can paddle for about an hour that direction until you have to turn around. I'm pretty excited to see what this area is gonna look like. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that noise, but I'm not sure if it's some sort of frog or bird. Kind of seems like it's coming from up in the trees. I don't know if any of you guys know, let us know in the comments. Now we were told that this area does get pretty shallow and you are allowed to swim in it. So if you are wanting to get off your paddle craft and enjoy the water, you'll definitely want to go right. All right, Jamie, what do you think of this paddle so far? Well, as soon as you get out of that run, the water is pretty clear. You know, it's not as clear as like Itchtuckney or Wachi yet at least. Yeah, we're still heading towards the head spring, so you'd think it will just keep getting clear, right? Right, but like it's not a lot of effort to get to pretty clear water. So I'm impressed so far. And if you're enjoying this experience of paddling to the Emerald Cut so far and want to help support our channel, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. One thing I really like about this paddle is that they do have a no speaker rule, so you don't got people blasting their music out here. You can really hear the nature. You're not hearing music. There's no motorized boats, so you're not hearing motors running. I was thinking this was kind of like Itchitukne because it's so clear and it's quiet. Compared to Itchitukne, I would say that it's much more of a jungle vibe here. It's very dense, very tropical feeling. Lots of palm trees, lots of vines. You really do feel like you're paddling through the jungle don't you? Yeah, 100%. The big difference I would say is that we haven't really seen any fish in the water here yet. Itchitugni was just full of fish almost everywhere that you looked and so far I've only seen one fish on this run but I'm sure we'll see a lot more. Now I know I say this in a lot of our paddling videos but if you're able and willing to try we would highly recommend paddling on these springs. The good thing about a paddleboard is you can see a lot more things in the water and the view is just much better up here than if you're sitting down like this. As you can see it's still pretty down here but you just can't see nearly as far ahead as far as what's in the water, but you can still sit or kneel if you want to. Shallow log. Yeah. All right, this is when you don't want to be standing on your paddleboard. These things can be really dangerous on paddleboards because you do have a fin that goes downwards a ways. So if you're paddling fast and that log is a little closer to the surface than you think, your fin can catch it and it can send you crashing into the water, which is exactly what happened to me when we were paddling at Chitugny. Thankfully, that log must have been at least a few inches down because my fin didn't even scrape it. So we just met Bianca out here on the water and she shared that she watched our channel before she moved to the greater Tampa Bay area. 
And I just wanted to take a moment to thank you all who watch our episodes and uh, just support our channel for just being along with us on this crazy journey. We always love meeting people and chatting with people and everybody is always so kind. So just thank you to everybody. We hope that we can continue this crazy journey and meet more of you in the future. So Jamie, where would you say this paddle ranks among your Florida paddles so far? It's pretty high up there, I'd say. You know, I haven't seen water as clear as areas on Wikiwachi and Itch Tuckney, but the effort that it takes to get to really clear water is a lot less compared to those two places. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like Gilcrest Blue, but at Gilcrest Blue, you can only paddle like a quarter of a mile, right? Maybe right, half of a mile. Water. Yeah. yeah, this yeah. one just keeps going. And here, you know, there's no motorized vehicles like there is on Wikiwachi and no tubers like there is on the Itch Tuckney. So True. It's really high up there. <laughs> for a lazy day paddle, it's maybe number one. Oh, for sure. <laughs> our very first trip to King's Landing sure was off to a great start. And as we slowly made our way up the run, the water seemed to just keep getting clearer. So we are paddling upstream right now. Generally, these spring-fed rivers only run like one to two miles per hour, I believe. It definitely does slow down your pace considerably, though. I believe the paddle upstream is about only half the speed of paddling downstream. Of course, that depends on your vessel and how hard you're paddling. We're in no hurry, so we're not moving too fast. We're enjoying our surroundings and taking everything in. And honestly, we probably won't even paddle back. We'll probably just float because I feel like we're going to want to make it last as long as possible. Thank goodness today is just a leisurely paddle and we can like fully enjoy the experience. Because when we were on both Itch Techni and Wikiwachi, we pushed it to our limits as far as the time if I remember. I think <laughs> we didn't get back until right around sunset because we had so far to paddle. So this is a nice change. What time would you say it was when we finally got on the water today? Around 11 maybe? Our scheduled time was 10.30. Of course, it takes us a while to inflate the boards, get all of our equipment rounded up and everything. So it was probably 11.30 by the time we actually got on the water, but I don't think it's more than maybe 65 degrees right now. It is absolutely perfect weather for being out here, I'd say. There's really no wind in here at all. It's a pretty calm day anyway, but if you just look how lush it is, how thick the vegetation is on each side of us, even on a fairly windy day, I don't think there'd be much wind in here at all probably a little chilly like if you actually wanted to get in the water and swim i'd probably like it to be a little warmer but as far as just paddling a 65 degree day is about perfect so this is where we're headed look at how gorgeous that looks but side note we both just got hit by a kayaker he did not know how to steer he was going downstream pretty fast pretty out <laughs> he hit of control both of us. <laughs> he hit jamie first then he hit me <laughs> Thankfully, I saw it coming. I, I was able to get down on my paddleboard so I didn't fall off. But he did knock the mount off of the front of my paddleboard. But luckily, I have a floaty on it. So it was easily retrievable. So the King's Landing website does advertise this as the number one paddle run in Central Florida. We're not really sure how much competition it has on that, but based on that statement, we are kind of expecting this paddle to be pretty busy, something more along the lines of maybe Wikiwachi, but so far it hasn't been busy at all. As you can see, there's no one in front of us right now. There's a couple behind us back there, but they're probably 100 feet or so back. It's just really calm, really peaceful. Still not many fish though, I wonder why that is. Where's all the fish, Jamie? And it's <laughs> She says that it's tuck me. Yeah, this is just gorgeous. Every freaking bit of it. See why I wanted to come here? Yeah. As we continue to make our way toward the headspring, we want to know what you think about King's Landing so far. Would you spend a day paddling on these crystal clear waters, or would you prefer to stick to Florida's hundreds of beautiful beaches? Let us know in the comments. If I walk slow enough, you don't see me, right? <laughs> I do think the current is picking up a little bit. I also think the water's getting a little bit clearer. 
Now this is kind of the perfect paddle for us today because we're both just exhausted. We've been trying to figure out where we're gonna move to the last couple of weeks. We've been trying to get our second channel going and we just haven't been sleeping that well or that much. So we are both kind of low on energy this weekend. I don't know if we could have done a big paddle like we did at Itchituckney or Wikiwachi. So this little paddle is perfect. Coming through. <laughs> we know people are going to ask, so yes, alligators and snakes can be found here. Just don't approach them. We have seen a few different birds along this paddle. There's one of them. Skylar just went right past these guys and didn't even see them. Well, I can't say we didn't see turtles anymore. Later, dudes. All right, Jamie, will you explain why you have yet to stand up on your paddleboard? It's because I wanted to take some shots on my phone, so it's back here, and with all of the logs, I was worried about falling in. Yeah, so there are a lot of crash hazards. Yes. So and I put my phone away eventually and then just <laughs> relax. Yeah, crashing your paddleboard isn't that scary when all of your electronics are secured in safe places, but when you got a phone hanging out in your back pocket, you definitely don't want to go in the water. So we've almost reached the turnaround point, we think, and we do believe currently we're in what's considered to be the Emerald Cut. The run has definitely widened out quite a bit in this area. And also you do see a lot more residences along the water in this area. After right around an hour of leisurely paddling, we had reached the point where we could paddle no further. And while we were still around three-fourths of a mile from the head spring, we learned that this initial stretch of the Rock Springs Run is designated as a tubing route that launches near the head spring. Those who wish to float down this section of the run or swim in the head spring can do so by visiting Kelly Park, which is located less than a mile down the road from King's Landing. Now another great option for those who wish to experience the beautiful springs in this area without paddling is located around 8 miles to the southeast at Wakaiwa Springs State Park. We had visited this park for a couple hours before our trip to King's Landing and it was definitely worth the $6 per vehicle entrance fee. How common is it to see a bear out here? Uh, pretty common actually. While we would soon take to the trails in hopes of a bear spotting, we first had to check out the head spring. Now you can probably see the steam rising off of the springs behind me and that's because while the water temperature in the springs is 72 degrees, the air temperature this morning is only around 55 degrees. Now surprisingly there are a few people still swimming in the springs this morning. I actually heard one of them say that it felt really good because the water is so much warmer than the air but I can only imagine how cold it would be getting out of the springs so I think we're going to leave the swimming to them today. I think they're right. I think it would feel warm once you got your whole body in here getting out would suck, but I don't know. <laughs> you reconsidering? While Skylar may have been considering taking a dip in the clear, cool water, I was more than content observing it from above. We learned that you can rent kayaks and paddleboards at this park, but since we'd be paddling just a couple of hours later, we decided to hit the trails. We are currently on the wet to dry trail in Wakaiwa Springs, and this has to be the coolest trail that we have been on out of all the springs that we have visited here in Florida. Now, if the thought of encountering a black bear out on these trails has made you have second thoughts of visiting this park, maybe this sign will make you feel a little bit more comfortable. Then again, maybe not. Although we didn't see a black bear on our hike at Wakaiwa Springs, we did get to meet Peaches, a six foot long, 22 year old pine snake who was out for her morning exercise. After one more trip back down to the springs, Skylar decided he'd save his swimming for King's Landing. Speaking of which, we still have to paddle around a mile back downstream. Now when we initially reached this turnaround point, there was what, maybe a couple other people here, but within like five minutes, I think there's now probably 20 different people pulled off, so it can get busy fast. So we just turned around and we are on the hunt for an area to kind of hang out for a while, since the turnaround spot did get pretty busy. Technically, we did see an alligator there it was back a little ways and it was just chilling now because we paddled against the current on the first mile of our trip we could now basically just float the entire way back to King's Landing just floating back Wow so pretty some of the properties along this area they do have music playing and they are playing good music at least let's see Skylar back there where's he at 
Yeah, you don't have to do like any work on the way back. We really only needed our paddles to steer as we let the current take us slowly back downstream where we were in search of a spot to park our boards and cool off in the refreshing spring water. We eventually came upon this wide and shallow stretch of the run which had a perfect mix of sun and shade and plenty of space to park our boards. So we found a place here in the jungle to pull off. I think we're gonna do a little bit of swimming, hang out a bit, get a drink. Yes, it is. After taking some time to cool off and relax, we were back on our boards, floating downstream without another paddler in sight. <laughs> this is so peaceful. But we soon found that we had some company, and it sure wasn't who we would have expected. Now this guy did seem pretty friendly, but I recalled seeing a video of a raccoon hopping on someone's paddleboard to steal their food, and since we did have some snacks on board, I made sure to keep my distance. I swear this raccoon is following us. Did he cross? Yeah, he crossed over this tree. That raccoon was definitely following us. Thankfully, we did manage to make it all the way back without a new pet raccoon. And while we show you the last little bit of this gorgeous paddle, we do want to mention that you can also paddle downstream from King's Landing. And while we only ventured a few hundred feet downstream before turning back, we did find this section of the run to still be quite clear and even less busy. Now King's Landing does offer an eight and a half mile paddle all the way down to Wakaiva Island with return shuttle service. That paddle does take you through much murkier waters with an abundance of wildlife, including alligators, and is recommended for experienced paddlers only. Now when we go out on these paddles, we often do get questions about our paddle boards, and recently we've been using these Ascend inflatable paddle boards from Bass Pro. We've taken these on a few long paddles now, and we've been really impressed with them. At this point, we would feel really comfortable recommending them. So if you are interested in getting one for yourself, we will leave an affiliate link in the video description. Now, if you are enjoying this episode, we do ask that you give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing, especially if you enjoy visiting Florida Springs or if you're considering to visit any Florida Springs. Very soon, we're gonna have a top Springs video coming out and we'll also be updating our Florida Springs playlist. After our paddle, Skylar is rinsing and deflating the boards. I am walking to our car. If you do visit King's Landing, you will park along this road here. Now they do give you very good instructions about that if you reserve ahead of time. We ended up just carrying our boards all the way to King's Landing from the road, but you can drive your vehicle down into the area to pick up and drop off boards. Now normally we do try to find a cool local restaurant after our adventures on this channel, but when we got back to the car and started looking, we just weren't finding that much, but we did find something called King Buffet. Now we don't need at buffets that often, but we are both absolutely starving and the ratings for the place online were pretty decent. So I think eating at King Buffet might be the perfect way to end our day at King's Landing. While the food at King Buffet definitely passed the eye test, we were still a bit skeptical about how it would actually taste. Now I started with sushi and soup. I know I saw Skylar get some sushi, but I think he probably also got a bunch of meat too. Oh, yep. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, it does. After a few plates of food each at King Buffet, we can confirm that most of the food here is good and the grilled chicken dish is excellent. It was a delicious way to cap off another amazing day on the Florida Springs. And if you'd like to see all of our other favorite Florida Springs, then go ahead and click on this video next. Thanks for watching.